All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're joined by Senior Associate uh, Head Coach Lisa Stoya here this afternoon. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off with um, a little bit of a, an opening statement preview from uh, Coach Stoya about our matchup with Oklahoma on Friday, and then we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Coach, whenever you're ready. Yeah, we're, we're obviously really excited to get back to work um, this week as we started that um, after our recovery on Saturday, um, after our, our home opener against Iowa State for the Big 12 Conference. But, um, you know, I think for us, we, uh, we, we tackle every week um, the same as we do everybody, no matter who the opponent is, getting ready for, um, as you can see, the Big 12 Conference is always interesting when you get into conference play because you just know each other so well. Um, Oklahoma to me, I don't think is a team that necessarily has the results that show the type of team that they are and the type of talent that they have. Um, so as we get back to the drawing board this week, you know, we'll focus on the things that we need to continue to get better at, obviously things that we continue to work at. Um, and then obviously trying to break down Oklahoma and, and how we can find some success against them this week. All right, we'll go ahead and start things off with Nick, Nick Farrell today. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Doing well, thanks. Hey, Lauren Sagala, veteran player for you guys. With all the injuries and, and, and adversity that you guys are facing at this point, what does an inform Lauren Sagala mean for this team? Oh, it's incredible. Just the experience, you know, that she has. Um, she's someone that has endured a couple injuries herself, you know, so I think that mindset that she could bring to the table, just knowing what she had to battle through to get herself to where she is today. Um, and just the, just the pure leadership, you know, she's got that experience out there. Um, she tackles every day um, as if it's her last, you know, and I think it's something that I think she can, you know, lead the team to thrive off her and the energy and the emotion that's behind everything that she's been able to do for us. Um, and it's been incredible to see her get in front of that net and obviously score some goals. Um, I think she was a little frustrating in the beginning of the season. Um, and now she's starting to find the back of the net for us, which is something that we continue to stress and that final third efficiency that she's been an important part of. Nick, you can go ahead. All right, so, so I'll, I'll take another question about a, a goal scorer in Julie Lynch. Um, scoring goals isn't really, that's not her role. I guess, can you, can you tell me about the, the impact that she's had on this team? Because to me, she seems like the type of player who does a lot but doesn't show up on the stat sheet because that's not really her role. Yeah. I mean, and, and overseeing her in the midfield a bit, you know, that's something that we've been trusting in midfield just in general is that, you know, how can we be more dominant in the final third? You know, I think we do a lot of the production on the, like you said, the behind the scenes work sometimes, whether it's on the offensive or defensive side. Um, but it's been incredible to see Lynch. I think if you actually enjoy the game, you could see where, you know, she makes she makes such bright decisions on the ball for us and takes really good care of that uh, to set our tempo, keep our composure. Um, but one thing about Lynch, though, is that she she actually can be a goal scorer. I think as midfielders, we are so prone to just being able to want to deliver balls more um, and work on that passing efficiency. But something we've stressed in midfield is, you know, we're getting forward, we're getting in the box, we're creating chances, but you know, how can we be the difference now and, and finding the back of the net? And I was super excited to see Lynch. I think you, you saw the pure joy if you watch her celebration after she did score that goal. Um, and it did say a lot. And, and I think that that's something that you work for. And, you know, she might not be known to be a goal scorer, but I think she's got the ability to be. And, and we're going to keep stressing that in midfield is, is keep dominating that area um, when we get in the final third. So yeah, quick follow up, Lisa. Is is what's she best at? Is it distribution? Is it being like sort of a fifth defender in a way? But what, what yeah, is? Yeah, she a little bit of both. Lynn, the one thing about Lynn, she's a very bright young lady in the classroom, but she's also a very bright young lady on the field. And tactically, I think she's such you know she's so aware of the game. She can solve problems for us offensively, um, but she also understands the ground. She's got to cover defensively, so she does protect the back four, but. Um, she also has the vision, I think, of a midfielder that can break down other teams, and she does it so well and composed, and that's something that's unique and special about midfielders. All right, Kevin Kinder, go ahead. Lisa, looking ahead at the schedule a little bit, and I know you're not allowed to do that too much, but just in general, these next six games are two road, two home, weekenders, weekenders. Do you like that? Do you think that helps you maybe get in a little bit of rhythm at home? Hey, we don't have to pick up out and back, out and back. And then when you go on the road, you can really focus on that road trip. 
Yeah, I mean, I think so too. I mean, it's been nice to, you know, have some single game weekends in the, in, within the Big 12 conference schedule, how it works out and you can really focus on, you know, one opponent sometimes, but um, kind of getting back to the real world of what we, we're, we're used to doing with the two game weekends. It's, um, it's definitely, I think being home is one thing, but I think getting on the road, um, it's nice because you, everybody's together, you know, you have that, that extra little bit of time um, to really kind of build our chemistry on the road a bit. And it kind of mixes things up too as well, but um, no game in the big 12 is easy. Um, and, you know, the prep work is going back to what we originally did just a lot of uh, breakdowns and just trying to tackle the next opponent one by one. So, um, but again, it's, it's something that we're used to. Obviously we had a year of something a little bit different, but it is nice to kind of get back into that routine and, and keeping the girls focused um, one game at a time. And then on those two game road swings, obviously you've got, you know, a little bit of practice work and recovery in between. Yeah. What else do you do? Is some kind of outing, some kind of fun thing to kind of <laughs> yeah. keep things mixed up a little bit? They'll, they'll definitely focus on school while they're there. So, um, so we definitely keep, keep tabs on them, making sure that they're doing their, their school work, but we try to, I think you have to, I think sitting around in a hotel last year when it was COVID, you couldn't do much. And um, I think for us, it's, you know, obviously we'll focus on our opponents that we're playing while we're on the road, but um, we'll do, we will do a lot of film breakdown and every so often we'll try to do something that gets the girls a little bit more out of the hotel. So they're not just sitting around. We like to keep them moving and staying active for sure. All right, Nick Farrell, go ahead. Okay, so on this specific matchup with Oklahoma, you mentioned the results. Like this seems like a team that uh, can score a lot, but also gets scored on a ton too. Uh, I, I guess, can can you guys exploit that? Is this an opportunity sort of like late in that Iowa State game where you guys can can really showcase some of that attacking talent on this team? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the, the goal is to hopefully, um, but at the end of the day, I, I think for us, like I said earlier, Oklahoma is a team that you can look at the results that they've had and and kind of, you know, see some scores that kind of grab your attention a little bit, but for us, um, no team is taken light, lightly. Oklahoma has given us some, you know, fits in the past, um, actually for scoring on them. So um, I think they've just been a little bit unlucky with some of the results. I think it's some of the goals scored on them. I think if you know soccer and you watch the game, you could definitely see um, how that's happened before. But um, but for us, I think we're going to continue to work on what we know we have to continue to get better at. And we've been talking a lot about our final, final third efficiency. Um, we create and generate a lot in our attack, but now it's just kind of making sure we're consistently finding the back of the net like we did last week. All right, our last question this afternoon will come from Nick Farrell. Yeah, so one more coach. I, I just want to know about this. Uh, Nikki talks about consistency all the time, right? Uh, and I, I want to get a, a second opinion. Not that I don't trust Coach Izzo, but, but just want to hear your thoughts on- Remember who um, she coached. <laughs> yeah, right. I, well, I, I want to hear your thoughts on consistency. Like how close is this team in that category to being where it needs to be now that Big 12 play has begun? I mean, the one thing she'll always say, though, every day we're trying to maximize our potential, you know, whether it be in training and, you know, every week that we can tackle um, what we're doing in our development phases. And the goal is always to be better by to be better by the end of the season. Um, we had some growing pains early on, I think a little bit with, you know, struggling maybe to find the back of the net. But um, that's been something that we've been focusing on. And consistency most certainly is something that we do stress. And that's not even just from the offensive side. You know, she's big on getting shutouts and, you know, and, and trying to um, making sure that we're doing everything we need to in our jobs, both on the offensive side and defensive side. So, um, but again, it's something that we do stress every day and, and being consistent isn't just, you know, doing things, um, you know, and, and obviously just getting the results, but it's doing the little things. I think that coach has really been stressing and every day we try to show up and do those little things so that, um, it'll ultimately helps us in the long run down the road. All right. That'll do it for us today. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay.